Welcome back, shop rats. Roderick and I are just here to welcome you back because today in the shop, we are back on the Stitches Challenger. Today, we're gonna take the time to drop out the front and the rear suspension out of this car and get it ready to put it up into position so that we can find the center point of gravity, which we're close to. Uh, and get the car ready to rotate. There's a lot that has to be done. I want to get some pieces of angle iron to weld in the door jams just for safety, although this car's been sitting now for about 12 hours and a uh, little more than 12 hours hanging like this. And the doors are perfect. The doors open perfectly. All the body lines are still lined up. So our chassis work is really paying off, uh, particularly those subframe connectors that we welded in have really made this thing stiff. But remember, we're hanging this car by its bumper ends, basically. And so, you know, in the middle of that car, there's just a lot of, well, you know, stress and pressure. And there might even be some anxiety. I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and start doing all of that and we could keep talking about it or we could keep doing it. So remember that the work that we do here doesn't just apply to a 70 Challenger, but it can apply to any project that you're working on. So let's watch the show intro. I'll see you in about 30 seconds. I'm Mike and this is My Car's Shop. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. I must admit that I do feel tireder than a tired thing today. It's been rough. Mark and I worked our butts off yesterday to get this car up onto the rotisserie and we've accomplished a lot. There's still a few safety things I need to learn about this rotisserie before I go ahead and start twirling the car. Not that I'm going to twirl it, but you know what I'm saying. Um, we got to jockey things around position wise and so forth, but we got to get this extra weight out, which means we're going to go ahead and get the tires off and start dropping the front suspension out. When that's done, We'll go back and take that rear end back out that we put in about two weeks ago and get that out of the way so that the car is about, you know, 200 pounds lighter and much more easily manipulatable. Man man manipulate yeah, we can, we, can, we can work with it better. the other side stripped down and I realized that this car is really been butchered over the years because on a Mopar the left side usually has left hand lug nuts which remember from a couple episodes ago there's one right hand stud in the rear end and the rest are left. I just discovered that the at least the one stud I only had one not on that wheel but that one's left hand's right on the right hand side also. I don't know. You, you, you run into interesting things down through the history of a car like this, that's for sure. So one of the first things we need to do is go ahead and loosen those torsion bars up all the way and get the tension off of those so that the front suspension is not tense. Because there's nothing worse than having a tense front suspension. Massages are expensive. Go ahead and get this with some more PV blaster. Let it soak in there. And hopefully we can get that down all the way. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to get out the big impact. This is my everyday impact gun that I've had for 30 years. I've got another one that's bigger, has a lot more work, 
has a lot more power. And, well, the air compressor is not on, and so we don't have much pressure. And sometimes things work better under pressure. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a copyright violation? Sorry, Queen. So obviously we had to apply a little of the old heat to that to get it out of there. They didn't take it out all the way. K-frames coming out, control arms are coming out, uh, but the torsion bar is completely loose, the mount is loose, so we can get the torsion bar out on this side. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll lather, rinse, and repeat on the other side. Um, along with about 17.2 pounds of dirt we're going to have to scrape out. We'll get that loose and then we should be able to get a hold of this torsion bar somewhere and start tunk, 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 knocking it back. It's got to slide out of the front control arm right there. And of course it has to slide back here. And this was one of the concerns that I had when I put the subframe in, is there enough room to uh, get this in and out of here? But there should be more than enough. There's, there's another way to get it out of here besides going straight back. If I remember, if you pull the control arm off and the K-frame out, you can just slide it forward. Um, I think Duddy over at Duddy's Adventures tried to do that recently, and it wasn't as easy as might first appear. So we're gonna try to do it the right way, and then if the right way doesn't work, we'll, uh, I don't know, we'll do something. our clip I need to find a light so you guys can see but anyway there's our ring so hopefully now we got some dirt scraped out of there and maybe we'll go ahead and shoot some PV blaster in there just because we can and uh, see if we can get this thing to go back I don't know it may it may not there's a special tool that Chrysler made that was a block if I remember right that bolted on there and then you would take a hammer and tap on it. I've had fairly good success using two vice grips. Um, and then I try, I try first with a soft blow hammer just to see if we can. Okay, that's not working. That ain't working. That's the way you do it. Oops, another copyright violation, huh? Probably should be using some round jaw vice grips instead of these straight jaw ones. <sighs> what ways have you found to take these out? Hey, that sucker's in there. Let's try a harder hammer here. This one be a little tighter. tight and you can't hear me I'm sure because of noise canceling okay then hmm 
Oh, I know why. The load is off of the torsion bar mount, but I haven't split the ball joint to take the rest of the preload out of the torsion bar. I forgot that little detail. You see, I don't always remember everything either. So uh, we gotta, well, I'll take the shock off and maybe we'll split the upper ball joint and that'll allow that lower control arm to fall down a little more and then we might be able to bang this back. But it's still got some torsion bar preload on it, I think's the issue, so there we go. One thing that's also helpful is if you take your suspension stop out, but I already have the suspension stop out because it, it left this planet a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I dropped the shock and checked and the torsion bar is now loose enough to move, but we've got another, I don't know, a lot of dirt down in there yet. So I got a, my little special hooker because Sometimes, never mind, never mind. We don't want to talk about hookers. Anyway, um, just getting in there and cleaning that dirt out of it will give us a little more room to. So let's give her a whack and see what happens. Again, using the two vice grips work pretty well. Probably have to work it back and forth a little bit, but I've moved it a good half inch, so. Put a little more duba dauber in there. Probably should have my gloves on. That will, it'll keep all the broken bones together in a cloth vessel after I break my hand, or it'll soak up the blood if I cut myself, so. It's kind of like a body bag for your hands. There we go, one down. For those that don't know, torsion bars are the springs for the front of your car on a Chrysler like this. So there we go, we got one out and uh, See, what else do we got to do over here now? I guess just go on the other side, lather, rinse, and repeat. Let's do the same thing. Just a little note here. I don't happen to have a deep well, half-inch drive socket smaller than 5.8. I don't know why. I just never bought a set. So, um, and I can't find my half-inch to 3.8 adapter. Go figure. My expensive snap-on adapter probably only costs 200 bucks. One thing I'll do, and I've done this many times on cars that you can get at it like this, is just use a pipe wrench on the shock itself to keep the shock from spinning, because I've got a ratchet on this side, and of course, with an impact gun, I can bust that loose, but since I don't have a socket that'll work, just throw a pipe wrench on there to hold that shock from spinning. Of course, you need to make it so it goes tight instead of loosey. This one's coming nice and easy because I actually remembered to lube it. I've got an air ratchet I could use, but I need the exercise. When you get to be my age, you don't get much exercise. Voila. Okay, now we'll go down and rat-a-tat-tat -tat our torsion bar down and get this torsion bar out of this side. Then all we'll have to do is, I think I'm going to go ahead and pop the ball joints, and we'll just uh, pop the steering shaft out and... The, yeah, once we do that, four bolts, we can drop the entire front suspension out of the car. I don't think I'm missing anything else at this point. This, this one is not budging. Um, so I think I'm going to put a little heat here and a little heat kind of back here, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll just try heat on the front. I don't know where it's stuck, but it's stuck like a stuck thing, that's for sure. So we'll see. The seal was on this side, so I don't think this is the side the issue is, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's being a little pot liquor, so we will uh, may have to get a bigger hammer. Maybe that's the issue. Still can't get that daggone blankety thingy out of there. So I went ahead and I popped the upper ball joint nut out. There's two ways you can get a ball joint to break loose. Usually when there's suspension uh, tension on it, you can... 
you can head it right there or you can take your fickle pork and just jam it in here and that'll do it that torsion bar was a pain in my tuchus hokey diner but it's out i'm exhausted my arms are falling off so there really wasn't any good way to film because i was afraid i was going to break my camera if i had you under there so so what i did was um i took the, everything off to be sure i don't think i really needed to drop that upper control arm but i did anyway and then i took a hammer inside the torsion bar in the back and took another hammer yeah, with safety goggles because hammers can explode you shouldn't hit a hammer with a hammer but that's what i did bound 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 drove it forward sprayed the crap out of it with dubadaber beat on the vice grips moved it back went back beat it forward beat it 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 back beat it forward moved it back went back beat it forward beat it back beat it forward beat it back beat it went back beat it forward beat it back beat it forward beat it back went back beat it forward beat it back beat it forward beat it back beat it forward beat it back beat it forward until it finally came out it probably took me 30 minutes of pounding to get that stupid thing out of there but it's out of there and i didn't break anything and i didn't screw anything up other than the fact that i'm not sure i'm gonna be able to play guitar for a week or two because my hand is so yeah, but anyway, it's swollen and aching. In other words, it feels like I've been working in the shop, which is a good thing to happen when you're right in the middle of recording a new album, by the way. And I drop this control arm off. Hopefully that goes all right. Drop off a few other things, nip off some brake lines, and then we should be ready to drop the entire front suspension as a unit whoop, right out of the car. suspension as a unit there's got to snip off a couple brake lines but the biggest pain in the butt right now is I got to get that cherry picker back out that we just put away yesterday so uh, I got to do some jockeying around and stuff but I'm gonna go grab some lunch and because uh, it's pushing two o'clock in the afternoon because that's what happens I get out here on a Saturday like this and I just start hammering away and completely lose track of time so we're gonna go get some lunch and then uh, regroup or poop and then come back and give you the scoop. and ask why I keep junk around like this old belt. Well, this is exactly why. I've got a whole variety of old V-belts that are not usable on a vehicle, but they're great for cutting and measuring to make belts if you need a custom belt. And you can take that in and get them to measure it and get you a belt the size you want or need. And I also use them for stuff like this. Now, it's possible when I unbolt this that the weight of this is gonna break that belt, and so be it, I don't care. But uh, at least it's an attempt to uh, put some pressure on this and hopefully gently lower it down or at least let it be some level of controlled chaos. So if I've got everything calculated properly, I think we need to just like go down here and like, well not with those we're not going to. So there we go. Boom. And we'll go around to the other side and do the same thing. 
tremendous opportunity to really bleed those brakes too while those lines are open like that, right? So I think all we have left now are the four K-frame bolts. There's one there, there, and there's one there, and then two on the other side. And the quicker we get this done and dropped out of there, the quicker we can find out what else we forgot to disconnect, and that's important. So. ready to set her out of there, set her out, take it out, drop it out. I don't know, we're gonna do something with it. I'm thinking we should get a piece of wood though to set down on the rotisserie so we'll have something to slide it because we're gonna have to slide it out of there. Probably come over this way with it so I didn't think of that until this second. So let me find something to do that with and we'll be right back. That should work. All right, let's see what we forgot. Woohoo! By jinkies, I don't think we forgot anything. All right, she's down. Front suspension is out, our rear end is out. I'm exhausted. I just gotta get the rear springs out and then that part of the job is done. So I'm gonna force myself to get that done even though everything in me is wanting to say, well, that's gonna do it for this episode. It's not. We're gonna get the springs out of that thing and then we can start playing with uh, rotating the center line on this thing to get this car so it, so well, you know, so it, so it does stuff. So that's what we got to do next. But um, for now, we're going to uh, whew, get the springs out. The car has still got a bunch of crap in it. The deck lid is still on. The tool's all over. And, but I was just curious, while the springs are under there, and I know it's a little bottom heavy, how it's rotating. So we'll pull our safety pin back and hold it. Not bad for one hand. It's not to the next pin hole, but yeah, it's uh, a little bottom heavy. We know we have the springs on it, but uh, it's getting there. So, yep, not bad. I'm beat. It's been a long day, but it's good progress. 
So what needs to happen next? Uh, I wanna get those braces welded in the door openings, even though everything is fine, nothing has moved, the doors are opening and closing fine, the body lines are perfect, the door gaps are still good. I still wanna do that just for extra assurance because it's gonna be on here for a while, probably a week or six. Um, also need to get the glass out, uh, get the doors off as I said. Um, that's about it. And the next things that need to happen on the rotisserie itself is it needs to get centered. It's bottom heavy right now, so to get it to turn, it's using quite a bit. And if it's exactly centered, it should rotate very easily uh, without a lot of effort. So uh, I went ahead and just tipped it up just to see what it was doing. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that it wants to come back to center. So a little bit's fine, but it's a little excessive right now. But until I get the doors off and get the glass out, things are just going to be wonky. So, and then the car has to go up quite a ways. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how much, but you can see that, you know, we're, we're not clearing the rotisserie down there, so it needs to go up a ways. I've got to figure all that out. I would say probably two feet, foot and a half, something like that. Uh, little by little, good progress. I need to go back over to the suggestion manual and just look things over. And I have a huge mess that I need to clean up. We've got another snowstorm coming and I've got to get the 47 back in the shop. So a lot of work to do yet today before I can quit. And I'm also in the middle of filming another episode right now. So I got to get that done probably tomorrow uh, on another little project that uh, you'll probably have seen before this one actually comes out. But anyway, it's all good. So uh, that's going to do it for today. I appreciate you watching. I always appreciate your feedback and your input. Um, as I say all the time, I know exactly what I'm doing. Doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just my way. And I appreciate the feedback that I get from you guys that say, hey, you know, I do it this way or I do it that way or there's this or there's that. I take all of that into consideration. But I'm also old and I've been doing this a long time and this isn't my first rodeo. And so really the channel is about sharing what I do. That doesn't mean I'm against learning because I was just watching a, an episode the other day over on Fitzy Fabrications where he was making some hood scoops for a Oldsmobile uh, station wagon to make it look like a 442 and it was really, really cool and I learned a few things. So some stuff that I'm sure I will be applying. So we're always learning, uh, that's for sure. All right, that's going to do it. We're over on the Insta thing. Uh, Facegram loves us. That's not right. We're here on the U thing, of course, forward slash my car shop on all three of those. And boy, I feel like there was something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, I remember now. This is very important. 